गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई होप यू गाइज आर मेंटली एंड फिजिकली फिट एंड रॉकिंग गाइज वी सक्सेसफुली स्टार्टेड अवर फर्स्ट बैच ऑफ सी एफ एंड ऑडिट इन इंग्लिश एंड इट्स गोइंग ऑन इन सुपर मैनर एंड नाउ वी आर स्टार्टिंग अ न्यू बैच ऑल टूगेदर फॉर सी एफ एंड ऑडिट इंग्लिश new course batch it is a new pattern batch guys what is the special thing about this batch is we have redesigned everything as per new study material and as per new pattern yes i can proudly say that we are amongst few or only one that we have reframed our complete notes as per ic ai study material we have created a beautiful book called audit titanium yes guys audit titanium in which everything is covered from study material in the same sequence in same sequence it is there so and all the questions please note that all the questions of new study material whether it is uh, test your understanding questions illustrations or test your knowledge questions everything will be covered in this batch itself see i have experience of around 15 years and i have seen every 5 years course changes and whenever course changes ca institute focuses on new study material a lot so questions drafting things in the new study material becomes extremely extremely important let me tell you guys except Uh, except one or two chapters maybe so there are total 19 chapters yes total 19 chapters audit is big it is voluminous out of 19 chapters if i skip two three chapters there are changes everywhere there are changes everywhere there are additions there are deletions and one should not ignore it okay guys so we are going to focus on this new study material and i bet majority of the question in fact 100% percent of the question in first few exams is going to come straight away from this only okay so we are on a tremendous strategy to follow study material that's why this particular batch is called as ICI new course study material batch it's a new pattern batch guys okay so i have given a small introduction let's take it ahead and guys uh, as it's in english so it's it's this particular batch is suited for all the south students or maybe some students from northeast and orissa who are comfortable in english language if somebody is not very comfortable in english language then they can definitely then definitely they should go for uh, ca file audit english batch that is hindi and english mixed batch so we have both the options available as you are comfortable you can go for any of those batches and a special hi to students sitting in hyderabad uh, uh in hyderabad guys i know that some of you uh, many of you in fact you are sitting in a classroom and watching this particular lectures i'll be very happy to interact with you okay now as we are going to spend a lot of time with each other you should know who i am okay so good things about me i have been a rank holder yes i have been a rank holder so i have seen that uh, how to how to get how to get how to achieve that topmost position being a rank holder all over india to be in that top 50 okay so i'll be sharing a lot of things how i achieved that but your rank and how you can also achieve that then let me tell you proudly i can say that i have been a failure also yes in ca final exams i cleared i cleared my first group and then i didn't clear my uh, one group i didn't clear and the next exam i cleared so i have seen that also that after being a rank holder not cracking both groups at one go not clearing it and then again clearing it so i know what reasons can lead to failure 
what reasons can lead to failure and also know how to come out of that failure. These are very important things. So, I will be sharing that also. I will be sharing uh, with respect to subject also and with respect to overall studies and overall approach that is very important. Then guys, I have done my articleship at PricewaterhouseCoopers Mumbai in statutory audits. So, I have seen best of the world class practices, how audits are designed, how they are planned, how they are executed, what kind of issues, challenges come up, how they are resolved, how standards on auditing are applied, how accounting standards and how accounting standards, okay, so in now India in, in standards, in AS, how they are applied and then uh, problems are resolved. So, we are going to see those things. I will be putting all my knowledge, experience and the practical exposure, everything when we are going to see this subject. Then guys, I have been, uh, I have uh, cleared, I have cleared two levels of CFA USL, so yes, but I did not uh, appear for level 3. So, I can say that I am a level 3 candidate and I am a thorough specialist for audit. So, if you see that I teach audit at two levels, intra and final, that is it, nothing else. So, my team, my time, our approach is fully focused how to make this subject beautiful, how to make it better and better, how students can score more and more marks in this particular subject. Guys, our books have been famous across India, uh, overwhelming response for our books, whether in old course, we had Bhaskar, a regular book, Param Question Bank, Fadu Chad book, these three books, these three books are famous across India and now in new course, in new course, we are going to have, instead of Bhaskar book, we are going to have a wonderful titanium, titanium book. So, this particular titanium book is going to cover everything, each and every concept. But it is beautifully designed. I will discuss with you around in 350 pages. Yes, guys, in 350 pages, it is going to cover complete 1200 page module in a beautiful manner. See, having wonderful book is extremely important. It should be, you should feel, you know, it, it should be very comfortable. It should be very comfortable that you read the book. There are points given, shortcuts given, important things are highlighted and then you have to revise it again and again, again and again, again and again, correct. So, guys, we have developed, we have designed a beautiful book for the new course, Titanium. Then you are going to get Question Bank, yes, new course, Question Bank, Param Question Bank. Uh, I promise this, that new course, Param Question Bank and then for a revision, we are planning it and we will let you know uh, what we are designing for the revision purpose. If you are attending the regular class and if you are having regular book, that is sufficient. Just do that again and again. That will be sufficient. You won't need a separate revision material. As such, it is of 350 pages. Okay. So, it is easily doable, easily achievable. At CA final level, 350 pages is nothing. Okay, now you are a CA student, you do, you should not be frightened with number of pages. Now, so I have given you background about me, so it will help, uh, it will help you, it will help me, so we both uh, connect with each other, we both understand each other and we both listen to each other. Now, so that was about me guys and now the next is about the subject. Let us see how subject is designed. This designing is also extremely important guys. So, I will be solving a lot of uh, doubts you are having. So, now if I talk about subject, do not worry sir, should we note all this down? See, you have to, you have to use smartness. Whatever you do, there should be smartness, correct? Now, my introduction is of no use. You should simply think whether this information will be of any use to me in the revision. If it is no use to you in the revision, you do not need to note it. Okay. I will be sharing link of all these notes. So, whatever I write in the class, you will be getting a link, live link, which will be updated. As I write, it will be updated. Okay. So, if you want to note with me, you can note with me. 
sometime if you miss it's absolutely fine you can note it once class ends on daily basis but then on daily basis uh, on daily basis it is advised that you cover everything if you do things on daily basis nothing can beat that a golden rule for super success is on daily basis you are supposed to revise it on daily basis if any notes has to be written you write it daily basis revise it if you do that you are going to crack it you are going to unlock 70 plus for sure we are going to prepare like that nothing less than 70 we are going to target that thing guys okay so and i understand that many of you uh, are not able to attain this particular batch because the timings are 10 o'clock to 10 to 2 30 so these timings uh, these timings are not very article shift friendly i understand that guys but then uh, we have our other batches also running so this was the time uh, which were which we could have used to comfortably deliver this particular subject don't worry if you're not able to attend live class you can definitely go for the recorded classes and cover everything now if i talk about subject guys so subject is divided in three parts is divided in three parts and first part is essay based standards on ordering based essays were important before also and now they have become extremely important Earlier, there were hardly, hardly three to four chapters, three to four chapters based on standards and auditing. Now, there are 11 chapters, guys. Out of 19, 11 chapters are dedicated to standards on auditing. This shows importance of standards and auditing. As per my experience, I feel I feel that around 55 marks, let me tell you subject, I am keeping in mind that subject uh, paper is going to be of 120 marks. It was going to 120 marks, 55 marks are going to come from standards on auditing, 55 marks. And these 55 marks major portion will be in the form of interactive case studies. It will be scenario based. So they will give you a situation. They will give you a situation and they will ask you. As a child accountant, what will you do in this particular situation as per standards on auditing? So, if you have studied standards on auditing with uh, at grassroots level with a lot of conceptual clarity, and if you if you have memorized it properly, you will be able to apply it and solve these case studies. Guys, don't worry. I'll be doing. I'll be covering all the case studies, all the questions which are given in study material. Apart from that. Our question bank will be covering all the relevant questions asked by the institute in, you know, uh, in past few years, which are relevant for us, everything. And let me assure you, if you cover audit titanium book properly and our question bank, let me assure you, you will be able to solve 120 marks bang on target properly. Hardly, it may happen some attempt, hardly 5 to 10 marks out of 120, I am saying. 5 to 10 marks will be outside this thing. 5 to 10, I am saying, guys. So, if you religiously follow our audit titanium book and our param question bank, that will be more than sufficient. So, standards and auditing is going to come for 55 marks. Extremely important. Then, we have 7 chapters. We have seven chapters that you can say that different types of audit. So it will be about having audit of banks, audit of NDFCs, audit of PSUs, then uh, different types of assignments, due diligence, investigation, forensic accounting, then how to do audit in digital environment, and a lot of these things. So as per my uh, experience, I feel around 50 marks. 50 marks is going to come from these chapters. It is very extremely important. See, if you want to be successful and if you want to unlock 70 plus in audit, it's very important that you cover these 7 chapters also properly. 
Sometimes students simply focus on standards and auditing and they don't focus on other chapters. And sometimes it is opposites. People simply focus on other chapters, they don't focus on standards and auditing. Neither of the approach is going to help you. If you focus on both the type of chapters, then only you are going to be successful. So guys, you have to cover standards and auditing also. And you have to cover different types of audit also. And then lovely, the beautiful chapter, the most interesting chapter, which you should score full marks. Okay. And that is only one chapter is dedicated, chapter number 19. Chapter number 19 is dedicated for that. That is going to come for 15 marks. So out of 120, 15 marks will be professional ethics. So guys, together it is 120 marks. 120 marks and that is how they have designed the course. So it's a good mix of standards, other chapters and professional ethics. It's very important to know this so that when you strategize, you cover everything. And that's the golden strategy that you have to cover everything. Of course, I know, sir, to go through so much, to remember so much, don't worry about it. We have designed beautiful things to make you comfortable in this subject. Now, if I talk about paper pattern, paper pattern, so again, 30 marks will be dedicated to MCQs. So those who have good conceptual knowledge and good coverage, they will be able to understand these MCQs and they will be able to solve these MCQs properly. And then 70 marks will be descriptive. Now this can be in the form of individual case study. Individual case study, that means there one case study is given. And on that basis, you have to solve maybe one MCQ, one MCQ or multiple MCQs or there is a case study given and you have to give a descriptive answer. Now what is case scenario? In case scenario, there will be one case study on which you will be getting MCQs also and you will be getting and you will and you will be getting you will be getting descriptive theoretical questions also. So, see, what is the plus point, what is the negative point? Plus point is, you study the case once and then you uh, have an overview of the case, study it. On that basis, you can solve MCQs also and on that basis, you can solve case study based question also. That's wonderful. You are able to solve multiple things on the basis of one case study. That's a big positive I feel guys. And that's in favor of the students. But then there is a mind game. That case study appears big. It is two pages. It is two pages. And then some students, some student may get frightened. Oh my God, it's a two page case study. Oh my God, it's such a big case study. How will I do it? But guys, come on. You are at CA final level. You are at CA final level. You should not be afraid about all these things. If you are smart, you should have an overview of the case study. Simply an overview of the case study. Go on the questions. Study questions properly. That is the most important thing. Read MCQ 2-3 times. Read option 2-3 times. And then you come back to the case study. Okay. Let us find out the relevant portion. Read it and solve it. So if you are smart, and I'm going to teach you how to study the case based scenario, how to approach it and how to solve, how to get the answers. Okay. So don't worry about that guys. We'll be doing everything. And we'll be taking tests. Yes guys, we'll be getting, taking tests. We are planning to take almost five, uh, five chapter wise tests. So we'll be covering different chapters, five chapter wise tests and uh, full course test also. If you are studying regularly and if you are giving tests, then you will be in touch with the subject. You will be able to express the subject and score good marks. Okay. Now, next is, so we are going to have daily class of two to two and a half hours. Daily class. Okay. Two to two and a half hours. I think that's a good enough time. 
and audit being a theory subject there is not a lot of writing work is there definitely we are going to write things but not everything it is not required see in today's time time is extremely precious we should spend time where it is required let's not spend it unnecessarily so we are going to spend time we are going to write things which we are going to write things which are relevant which are important for developing ourselves we are not going to write everything we have to write complicated things okay so really two two and a half hours of class concepts will be covered and as i said each and every question of ICI new course study material will be covered. Let me tell you that institute has, uh, so they released one material, but after that, just few days before, they have revised the material again. Now, because we see the material on regular basis, we realize that it has been revised. Okay, so we are covering the revised version. So we are covering the revised version. Everything will be as per the revised version. Then the most important thing and lovely thing about our classes, I will be giving you daily audio revision. Yes, guys, this is going to be a big, big, big game changer. Irrespective of how good were the classes, how wonderful were the classes, how beautiful was the case discussion, how good were the notes, how good was the memory technique, how good was the discussion. We loved it. We enjoyed it. We are feeling comfortable. Everything is fine. But let me tell you, after a few days, after a few days, okay, uh, you, you are going to, you know, lose that memory. After a few days, you are going to lose that memory. So, best thing is, you should listen to two to three audio revisions on daily basis. One audio will be of around 15 minutes, 15 minutes, one audio will be of 15 minutes, uh, that too without increasing speed. So, if you increase speed, you will be able to cover it around 10 minutes only. Okay. So, if you, if you, on daily basis, if you are listening to two to three audios, now just imagine. So, in class, we have covered the concept once and then I repeat also in the class. So, it is two times. Okay, then you go and listen to, you are going to listen to two to three audios. Suppose you are going to listen to two audios on daily basis, two audios on daily basis. That means every topping is getting revised two times. Okay, so along with class, you'll be covering all the concepts four times. That is going to make you very, very comfortable. So, these audios are going to be game changer. We are going to give you audios of the whole subject. So, just imagine the whole subject will be covered in 15 to 20 hours of audios. 15 to 20 hours of audios, guys. Now, you have to continue this ritual of listening to two to three audios after cl once class is also over. Once class is over, after that also. So, let me, then what will happen? I will tell you. Within every 20 days, you will be covering the audit course. You will be able to cover audit course multiple times. And guys, that is going to be the secret. Completing whole course multiple times. You will be so, so, so comfortable. So, once class is over, along with class, you have already covered subject four times. Already covered four times. Then after that, within 20 days, one go, then 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 one go. If you follow this religiously, guys, last one and a half days, you will be able to revise subject twice. Not once, but twice. But you have to follow this advice of listening to two audios on daily basis. An audit is a subject, you don't study it completely, you know, many students make this biggest blunder, biggest blunder. So, or I have allocated 10 days for audit. Audit is not subject like that. It needs revision on daily basis. When you revise on daily basis, then that becomes comfortable. Then you start enjoying that subject. Then you start loving that subject. Then you start excelling in that subject. Okay, guys. 
So daily revision audios. Sir, from where are we going to get all these daily revision audios? Okay. Now, you are having uh, some links in the description of this video. Description of, the, of this particular video and those links are extremely important. Okay. One link is one link is to a folder, a folder where you can get soft copy of some of our notes, soft copy of some of our notes and then you are going to get audio revision, you are going to get index of this particular batch. So that link is given in the description, that link is given in the description, it's the notes links, it's the audio revision link. So that link will be extremely important. Okay. Apart from that, apart from that, guys, just a minute. It is extremely important that you join few things which I am telling you right now. So you are supposed to join, you are supposed to join Audit Guru CA Ravi Tauri AIR. This is the channel. This channel you are supposed to join. Okay. So you simply search for that Audit Guru. Audit Guru, you search for that in Telegram. We have given the link in the description also. And if not, you can simply scan this QR code. You can simply scan this QR code and you should join that audit guru telegram channel. Okay. So you're supposed to join this channel. You can join right now or maybe you can join later. But then remember, you can note it down. I have to join that audit guru telegram channel. Then you're supposed to join. CA final doubts and notes group. CA final doubts and notes group. Yes, guys, that's extremely important. Again, link of this particular group. This group is given. We have recently made this group is given in the description. So you join that. Now there are a lot of topics. A lot of topics given. So this is this is one of the topics. English study material, a regular batch. May 24 onwards, all important communications with respect to this particular batch will be given in this particular topic. So in telegram group, we have topics and in this particular topic, we are going to post everything. And if you got any doubt with respect to this particular batch, okay, you can ask on this tab. Then if you have audit related doubts, you can cover you can ask in this audit tab. So there is a separate audit topic. You can ask there. So it's important to join this also. So I have uh, informed you about Audit Guru Telegram channel. I have informed you about audit. Then I have informed you about this particular group also. Okay. Now. Once you have joined that, that's important. You are going to get audio revision from that link again, from that link which we have a OneDrive link we have given. These classes will be around 100 to 120 hours. Now, this discussion is required, guys. 120 hours, it's an estimate. It can be around that. We are going to full justice to the content, full justice to the content. We are not going to compromise with anything. Because for us, result and good performance is extremely important thing. So we have that in target. So keeping that in mind, we are going to teach everything. You are going to get a book. It is, we have covered everything. We have written all the technical, we have written all the technical language. In fact, some, in some places is the complete language as it is. It's hardly 350 pages so that you cover it on multiple times and then as i have said revise param question bank also an mcq book will be giving on, on 
on PDF. PDF will be made available to you. So you can go through that. You can solve your MCQs. And then see guys, once class is over, see this new course batch, we are doing a lot of things. We are developing notes side by side, very high quality notes, our question bank, our MCQ book. Once these batches are over, once I'm through with my Hindi English batch, I'm through with my English batch, we are going to go give you a lot of material and a lot of videos, extra question discussions, MCQs. So a lot of things are going to go along with that. We will be there for marathon revisions. We will be there for last day revisions and all the doubt support you want. Everything will be there. And as I said, approach is going to be very simple. You have to revise multiple times. You should allocate 30 to 45 minutes as per your comfort for audit. Only do this much. Allocate 30 to 45 minutes in your schedule for audit on daily basis. And in that time, use revision audios and videos. We are going to give you revision audios. We are going to give you revision videos. Okay, end of the chapter, we are going to do Q&A practice. You are also supposed to do Q&A practice. Q&A practice is altogether extremely important. It's a next level thing. Even that needs to be done. Okay. So guys, uh, I've explained about myself. I've explained about the subject, about the question paper, how it's going to be. Then uh, what we will be doing in the batch and how you are supposed to study. We have done all these things, guys. Now let's get to the first chapter. And that's going to give you 15 marks. 15 marks from that chapter is going to come. Okay. And it can increase. Sometime it may go to 20 marks. So if, if, in any, if in any particular attempt, it goes to 20 marks, it's a bonus. It's a celebration time. Okay. It's a celebration time. Now, So, first chapter is professional ethics, professional ethics and liabilities of auditor. That is the first chapter. And let me be very honest, this chapter is as it is. They have not changed many things in this. This chapter is on same lines as it used to be in the old course. It is amongst those few chapters which is as it is. Okay, uh, when it comes to standards on auditing, let me clarify one more thing. They have, they have uh, covered standards in the main material and in some standards, they have simply given the name in the index and they say that we expect that you have that knowledge of CA inter. So, application of those standards is applicable, uh, is expected. Application. After covering everything from the study material, everything from, from the study material, in the last, at last, we are going to cover those standards also. We are going to cover those standards also because for application, again, you need to have an overview. So, we are going to give that complete overview to you and audios for that also. So, guys, we will be giving full, full, full support to you. Now, it's up to you. Do you match our energy? Do you match uh, our expectations? Okay. And if you match our energy, you match our expectations, you are going to rock. You are going to unlock 70 plus. Okay. So, now... Let's go to the first chapter, chapter number 19, Professional Ethics and Liabilities of Auditor. During the class, keep scribbling. You can keep writing. You can, man you can maintain your 200 page book. You can keep writing what are the important concepts, what is going on. You can keep marking. Maximum time, keep writing, keep marking something or the other. This keeps you very active. This increases your memory. This increases your understanding. So keep scribbling during the class. Okay. So CA Institute 
see institute has done a new thing this time what they have done when they start any chapter so in 19 chapters whenever they start a chapter they have explained one case okay now let me tell you it is a simple it is simple case and simple situation it is not a question answer it is not a question answer just a case a scenario is explained and that case is related to this particular chapter that's it so you don't you don't have you don't have to you don't have to remember or retain this particular case see what is the magic of this audit titanium book what is the magic of this audit titanium book is it is having if you see the book it is having side headings clearly visible easy to understand Okay, so we are back. So uh, there's a dialogue that uh, in big countries, small things happen. So a lot of happening on the day one of the class. Initially, there was some technical issue, <laughs> and now unexpected. It never happens generally. So, anyways, now guys. So, I was explaining you that at the start of the, uh, at the start of the chapter, they are discussing a case simply to give feel of what kind of case studies or case scenario or what kind of content you are going to expect in exams. Okay. So, let's start with that. Let's start with this. So, imagine a case scenario. Uh, I was also explaining that these are the side headings we are giving, we have given. So, across the book, you are going to have the side headings. These are very crucial. You are not going to find a simple lengthy paragraph. You are going to see small, small one, two lines of points. This is going to make reading the book extremely simple it is going to make reading the book extremely simple and uh, uh, it, it will be uh, simple and you will be able to read it fast also because of that so you're not going to see big paragraphs you are going to see short short points then these points are you know we have given these points after thinking a lot what kind of heading should be given so that it should represent the content and it is easy to retain also, easy to remember also. 
and we will be giving you a lot of shortcuts. Lot of shortcuts on how you can retain, remember these points. Okay. So, we are going to discuss a lot of things as we go ahead. We are going to use a lot of memory techniques. So, dividing it into small points that is very important for memorization. Then, grouping them, grouping them in clusters. Again, we are going to do that so that you remember the points easily. Then, we are going to give you stories, we are going to give you uh, mnemonics and logical flows, practical life flows and so on, which is going to make very easy to remember things. Okay. And I was seeing a query out there. So, if you got any query, simply go to the admin. Simply you can go to our admin. Let me share you uh, our admin number. See, if you want to co contact me all together, then you can WhatsApp me on 9096000033. So, you can reach me directly. And for all admin queries, please don't come to me with the admin queries. Okay. As such, a lot of time I am busy and then I am solving doubts. Because I am going to redirect you to the same admin. I am proud of our admin. They are really very good. They, they care about students a lot. Okay. So, 9322011915. But please contact them on working days. They also have some offs. Okay. Sundays and some holidays. So, working days and that too, 11 a.m. To 6 pm, 11 am to 6 pm. These guys work more than that, guys, but then they have a lot of other work also. So, 11 am to 6 pm is perfect time to contact them for any queries you have, any kind of query you have. Okay, uh, you might be uh, you might be having uh, you might be having queries with respect to books, uh, activation, how to watch lectures, views, whatever the query is. Simply contact them. Okay. You can put a WhatsApp to them also. And give them at least uh, some time. Generally, they call back all the missed calls. Give them one day time to uh, resolve issues. They generally inform you how much time it will take to resolve things. Please cooperate with them. Okay. And uh, many times it happens that all the frustration of studies of the office Generally, student went out on the admin staff. Please don't do that. They are also human beings. Please don't vent out your anger, your frustrations on uh, admin. Show some patience. Show some respect towards them. Okay. Now, guys, finally, let's come to the case they have given. So, they explain that uh, there is an auditor. There is an auditor and Mr. R. He's an auditor. Imagine this. So, Mr. R is an auditor and he is doing audit of a bank. He, he, is, he is doing audit of a bank. And a very sincere auditor, very smart chap. He's doing audit carefully. And then he identifies a lot of loans given by the bank where management's, where management has not properly classified it into NPA. So, he comes to know about hidden NPAs. My God, hidden NPAs. NPA is a big headache because as soon as you see the NPA, you will have to make the provisions for NPA. So, he has identified a very, very big material misstatement. And he comes to know that management has done it intentionally. So, it is not an error. It is a fraud. It is not an error. It is a fraud altogether. Now, what banks management is saying, dear auditor, these are some seven large accounts which are actually NPA. But we have done the window dressing, we have hidden it as a performing asset. 
डोंट वरी लेट्स मीट द बोरोर सो ही गिव्स कॉन्टैक्ट डिटेल्स ऑफ द ऑडिटर टू द बोरोअर्स सो आउट ऑफ आउट ऑफ सेवन बोरोअर्स सम बोरोअर्स दे कम एंड मीट द ऑडिटर एंड एक्सप्लेन देम सी वी आर वेरी बिग पार्टीज यूर ह्यूज पार्टीज and if you keep our account out of npa we are going to pay you money and take care of you we'll pay you in crores so auditor is offered bribe by the borrower and what auditor has accepted that bribe accepted that offer highly unethical activity auditor was supposed to be truthful he was supposed to report whether financial statements due to and fair view he is compromising with the most important ethical principle being truthful showing integrity being honest you so out of that some borrowers some borrowers have given him money he is not reporting them as npa other borrowers who have not who are not in touch with the auditor who have not given money they are disclosed as npa now this is a complete mockery of our ethical principles complete mockery of our profession that's what they have explained see don't we don't need to remember this case we don't need to remember this particular case no need to remember this the headings we want we just have to understand the crux so if you see module if you see module is a huge case it's a huge case which is little difficult to read understand and retain the best part is best part is you can always keep always keep your icm module you can always keep your icm module along with these notes everything is in the same sequence same flow so we are covering each and everything from the module in the same sequence in the same flow all together okay so when you do that you cover in same sequence same flow you feel extremely comfortable guys so it is completely unethical it is completely it is completely completely unethical basic fundamental ethical principles are compromised it is a big mistake by the chartered accountant it is called it is unethical activity it is murder of the profession and then they explain that he will be punished as per the ca he will be punished as per the ca act and he is not following the ethical principles they are also giving reference apart from that apart from being honest he has to maintain he has to follow more principles like confidentiality also so it's a, it's basically a background a case study where a child accountant is compromising He is not doing justice to our ethical principles. Okay, now guys, let's see. Introduction of professional ethics. Introduction of professional ethics. I will consider. I will. I won't consider it a very important category. It's a simple introduction. So, what do you mean by ethics? Ethics are the principles which tell us. moral principle which tell us what is good and what is bad so being honest is good be ethical principle being honest is good that is ethical being dishonest is not good that is unethical so ethical principle simply tell us what is good and what is bad what is professional ethics in ca profession what auditor should do what auditor should do and what he should not do professionally what is correct what is not correct what are do's what are don'ts that's called professional ethics these are professional ethics these are very important extremely important then only people are going to show trust on us then only shareholders bankers authorities government analyst society is going to show trust on us so 
we know what is ethics professional ethics this is very important then only people are going to show trust people are going to show trust on us and we are supposed to preserve and maintain that trust it's our duty profession of chartered accountancy was introduced because there was a lack of trust management management of the companies entities they were preparing financial statement but they no one was believing it no one was believing in it so to remove the trust deficiency the concept and the concept of chartered accountancy was introduced concept of audit was introduced is very important to maintain that trust now who is going to explain who is going to explain these ethical principles so ca institute has code of ethics ca institute ca institute has code of ethics code of ethics so it's a booklet code of ethics is a booklet it gives what are the fundamental princip ethical principles so all the chartered accountants are supposed to be ethical so to be ethical what principle they will have to follow so it discusses five fundamental principles five fundamental ethical principles it has been asked in question it has been asked in exam what are the five fundamental principles of ethics you have studied this in inter that only that is only called as ethical requirements that is only called as ethical requirements so there is a code of ethics booklet so when you become chartered accountant you are going to get a post from the ca institute and you are going to get this beautiful book code of ethics and that's going to explain five fundamental principles okay it's mandatory to follow these principles if you don't follow these principles institute is going to punish you if you're not going to follow they are going to discipline you they are going to punish you okay so it's very simple it's very simple i don't think they will be targeting this in exams but then when you read any concept ask two questions to yourself can i get a theory question on this always ask this can i get a theory question on this see smartness is going to be the extremely important thing when you study any subject you want to ask especially theory theory uh, descriptive question on this and next is am i going to get any mcq question on this so honestly if i ask question any descriptive question i don't see i don't see a framing of any descriptive question here okay but then mcq i see our motto our motto our mission statement of ca institute is also based on this ethical principles ya esha supteshu jagriti ya esha supteshu jagriti you should be awake you should be awake you should be alert you should be awake you should be alert in this world even if people are unethical you should be awake even if people are sleeping you should be ethical even if the world is unethical you should be truthful even if the world is lying irrespective of how people are behaving in this world you become that torch bearer you become that honest professional this is our motto so our motto is based on the fundamental ethical principles you can get mcq on this i really believe and i feel there should be a question on this is the motto line which every chartered accountant every ca student should know about it ya esha supteshu jagriti so it's it's a sanskrit phrase it's a sanskrit phrase Kathopanishad signifies internal vigilance, being awake when the world is asleep. Okay, <laughs> some students feel that it, that means that uh, we should be awake whole night. Oh, come on, it's not like that. Come on, it's not like that that you should be awake whole night. 
okay don't don't misinterpret it and don't spoil your life you should take at least 6 hours of sleep 6 to 7 hours of sleep as per what is required that's required for a very good performance for a very good day okay don't make nuisance i when i see social media people make any any interpretation any memes and they say that i should be awake whole night because i am a chartered accountant this is this is foolishness please come on grow up don't have such kind of interpretations huh? don't make mockery of things now so once we have this uh, once we have this introductory principles introductory principles let's go ahead overview of this code of ethics so if you if you go if you go to see if something is very important or something is least important i am going to mark it rest of the other things are going to be rest of the other things are going to be b category okay now overview of this code of ethics book so we are going to do this code of ethics book so it is generally called volume 1 it is in volume 1 this code of ethics we are talking sir what is there in other two volumes uh, we will discuss this later on but then you are going to get this code of ethics book in volume 1 there is a complete code of ethics is given so this code of ethics book is divided into four parts into four parts okay part 1 is going to tell you it says that so what is the structure so you can get a mcq for this you can get a mcq for this you can get a descriptive question because uh, ethics are very important and all ethical principles which we follow in our profession they are coming out from this book from this booklet from this document and as a child accountant you should be aware about these basic things so the structure is very simple you got part one okay and now this is the name which where is name name of the part one so it says that it is mandatory for all the chartered accountants to comply to comply with part one and part one gives us fundamental principles it explains five fundamental principles to remain ethical that is also called as ethical requirements and all the and all so ethical principles uh, it also explains how to how to implement these principles how to uh, it explains uh, it explains a lot of principles with respect to each principle a lot of points with respect to each principle for all professional accountants so for all chartered accountants guys now this code of ethics is a copy of international code of ethics the code of ethics which we are discussing right now it is a copy of international code of ethics so instead of using word chartered accountants they use word professional accountants but let me tell you we don't get the feel we don't get the feel till the time we use the word chartered accountants and in exam also instead of writing professional accountant you can write chartered accountant let's be very clear we need conceptual understanding we need to retain points and then explain in your own language and try to use technical more and more technical words now, technical words what do you mean by technical words some of these are typical words typical words which i am going to highlight okay these are typical words which should be used always so i am going to highlight throughout the teaching i am going to tell you oh see this is a technical word you should follow this the rest everything has to come in own language only so part 1 part 1 is simply it says that follow all the fundamental principle all the professional all the professional accountants that means all the chartered accountants whether they are in practice whether they are in practice or whether they are in job they have to follow all of them whether they are in practice whether they are in job that means whether they are in service all of them need to follow this this fundamental principles then part 2 so all all professional accountants part 2 is part 2 is applicable only to those
पार्ट टू इज एप्लीकेबल ओनली टू दो चार्ड अकाउंटेंट हु आर इन सर्विस सो पार्ट टू रिक्वायरमेंट आर स्पेशली फॉर दो चार्ड अकाउंटेंट हु आर इन सर्विस अपलेबल टू अकाउंटेंट इन वेरियस सेक्टर्स दो इन professional accountants in service sometime this may happen that there are some practicing chartered accountants practicing chartered accountant they are having cop yes now what do you mean by practicing chartered accountant see after becoming a chartered accountant you have a option either you take a certificate of practice from the institute or you do other things so if you take if you take a uh, if you take a certificate of practice you are called as you are called as chartered accountant in practice but then we are going to study sometimes along with cop you may go for a job generally in the initial phase when you don't have your lot of your own clients you can go for a job people go for a job with other chartered accountants in practice with big ca firms or they may go for a job with companies also so it is applicable to those accountants who while having cop with them while they are in practice they are side by side doing job also applicable to accountants in various sector those in public practice as employees so they are in public practice that means they are holding cop they are holding cop they are holding cop but along with cop they are working as employees also somewhere for some time they are working as employees lot of chartered accountants they do it initially it takes time to get settled to get your own clients so in that time for remuneration for money for earnings to flow for earnings to flow they work as employees so even for them part 2 will be so that's very important part 2 of code of ethics is applicable to all the chartered accountants in job in service and if the cop holders those who are in public practice are doing part time full time job somewhere for some time again part 2 will be applicable to them when they are doing job okay so i hope it is clear about you are clear about it so sometime along with practice people are doing job when they are doing job for that particular issue for that particular matter for that particular assignment part 2 will get applicable to them part 3 now it's common sense guys come on think about it if part 2 is for chartered accountants if part 2 is for chartered accountants those who are in part 2 is for chartered accountant those who are in those who are in service then part 3 then part 3 is going to be part 3 is going to be for chartered accountants those who are in practice yes guys those who are in practice professional accountant public practice so part 3 is applicable to chartered accountant those who are in public practice applicable to accountants providing professional services they are in public practice they are giving services to society to individuals to companies corporates and so on okay now part 4 so it's very simple part 1 fundamental principles all have to follow whether you are in practice whether you are in service then part 2 is applicable to chartered accountants who are in service part 3 is for chartered accountants who are in public practice they are doing your own practice independent office practice part 4 is independent standard one of the most important principle on which the complete audit profession is based is independence independence that means legally financially personally professionally you should not be dependent if you are not dependent on anyone personally financially legally professionally you are called independent 
सो इंडिपेंडेंस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिक्वायरमेंट इंडिपेंडेंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिक्वायरमेंट दो आर इंडिपेंडेंट इट इज इजी फॉर देम टू बी ऑनेस्ट इट इज इजी फॉर देम टू बी अनबायस्ड इट्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट प्रिंसिपल ऑन विच अवर प्रोफेशन इज बेस्ड सो स्पेशली फॉर इंडिपेंडेंस एंड लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम अराइज लॉट ऑफ रॉन्ग रिपोर्टिंग lot of unethical activities are done because because chartered accountant was connected associated dependent on the client in one way or the another so at the root cause is the independence issues so independence is given a lot of importance whether it is code of ethics whether there is standards and auditing whether it is law whether it is sebi whether it is supreme court high court everyone expects and demands that chartered accountant should be independent how to be independent how to ensure how to be independent how to remain independent what things should be done what things should not be done so there is a part 4 there is a part 4 in that there is part 4a and part 4b part a is for how to maintain independence if you are doing audit or review when you spend lot of time perform all the procedures and you generate a opinion on financial statement that's called audit when you have less time available when you have less time available okay and you have less time so within 15 20 days you have to complete the assignment and you have to give opinion on the financial statements so you have less time available you can do checking in short you can simply go for inquiry and you can go for analytical procedures and inquiry we're going to study about that so when you do the whole checking in short manner and applying only few procedures and not detailed procedures that is called a review assignment there's a complete chapter on this that's called review assignment so here you should simply understand one thing If you're going, if you're doing in-depth checking, that's called audit. That's called audit. And if you're doing checking in short, that's called review. So when uh, you do, uh, when on annual basis, you check exam, you check financial statement of the company, that's called audit. And then quarterly financial statements, you give report within ten, fifteen days, that's called review. That's called review. Okay. So. if you have seen uh, uh, if if you have seen newspapers and you have seen quarterly results lot of times they write unaudited there lot of times they write unaudited the question is why they now the question is why they write unaudited okay they write unaudited because it is reviewed that's why they write unaudited at the end of those advertisement you will say that these are reviewed financial data so if you are doing if you are doing audit or review then how to maintain independence what things you can do and what things you cannot do that is explained in 4a now 4b if you are doing assurance engagements other than audit and review sir so there are there engagements other than audits and reviews yes there are more assurance engagements other than audits and review, regular audits and reviews also sometimes you uh, sometimes you report on uh, prospectus reports in prospectus sometimes you report on internal control systems so if you are if you are into assurance engagements if you are into assurance engagement and then other than audit and review then in those assignments see what do you mean by assurance engagement whenever you comment whenever you comment on reliability of the information you are assuring someone whether the information is reliable or not that is called a assurance engagement if there is a assurance engagement but it's not a regular audit and review of financial statements it is something like uh, prospective financial statements prospectus all together systems all together 
then how to maintain independence that is explained by part 4b and then we have glossary so the most important thing which we have studied in the whole discussion after seeing after having an introductory part and the case study and the background apart from ya esha saptishu jagriti that's extremely important apart from that now here we have seen parts of code of ethics so we have seen parts of code of ethics so part 1 all cas and it talks about fundamental principles lot of discussion about the fundamental principles and how to implement them part 2 is only for all for cas in service and cas in service so if a practicing chartered accountant is doing job along with cop is doing job any kind of job part 2 will get applicable then part 3 is for cas who are in public practice simply practice public practice or practice part 4 is about all about independence again it is for cas in practice it has two things if if you are doing audit or review of regular financial statements 4a is going to explain how to be independent what are do's and don'ts apart from that apart from apart from regular audits and reviews if you are doing other assurance Uh, engagements then part 4b will be applicable this can be targeted in mcqs so in which particular part what thing is covered and about applicability what thing is applicable to which particular chartered accountant this can be covered see whatever we are studying is from study material altogether straight away from study material not a single word you know we are we are going to be you know audit course is such big and voluminous we have to stick to module first we have to thoroughly cover module first and then only we have to cover something else and the you know, see after module it's a ocean after module it's a ocean out of 120 marks out of 120 marks expect that 110 marks will be straight away from the module each and every time 10 marks hardly will be outside the ocean outside the ocean smartness is to focus on this 110 marks foolishness foolishness is to focus on the ocean now outside module there are n number of things it is difficult to cover them it takes more time it it takes more time it doesn't make sense to spend lot of efforts on that so stick to what is given in module that is more than sufficient and i will say that cover that first and then start talking about anything else okay ca exams are always step by step always step by step first cover this important step and if time permits go for the next step who is stopping you but cover this step first so this is extremely important guys Okay, just a minute.
let's see now next is structure now apart from that is a glossary so what do you mean glossary so glossary it simply explains uh, terms which are used in code of ethics so all the technical and all the difficult terms which are used in code of ethics they are explained in the glossary section so that is also one of the part of code of ethics booklet a glossary glossary is nothing but a place where you will find explanation to all the technical terms which are used in the book okay now guys see get the concept get the key points next and keep scribbling so we have seen a case that is not very important they simply explain some unethical behavior by a chartered accountant fine then we have seen the introduction they have given what do you mean by ethics why it is important to follow it okay they have discussed about that and our motto is based on that and then the parts of code of ethics there are four parts of code of ethics next is the structure so if you are becoming if you are becoming a expert in something you should know the base you should know some basics like when you study law when you study law you know what is section what is subsection what is clause what is sub clause then there is section 2 of the act which gives definition and that's the only section where you get directly clauses correct so on the same lines when you are studying code of ethics you should know how it is drafted how it is draft uh, how it is drafted so let me show you how it is drafted okay just a minute let me show you how it is drafted so you'll see you should know still the small small basics okay let's see this is not expected in exam but it will simply give you a, uh, give you a feel it will simply give you a feel of uh, code of ethics so if you see code of ethics booklet you will see uh, this is the index this is the index so there is a part 1 this is a part 1 and in part 1 you will see section there is section 100 section 110 and in that again there are the section 111 section 112 113 114 115 they are numbered in such a manner that you understand which particular section belongs to which particular topic okay so 110 then you understand okay 111 is connected to 110 112 113 114 115 it talks about five fundamental principles we are going to discuss that then the conceptual framework for the discussion on that part 2 so it is a index now just a minute guys so so again as i said it's not they are not expecting this but then you should know it so if you see code of ethics it is divided into four parts and in each part you are going to get section 
Now these sections are not literally like sections which we see in the law. Okay. But then they are called sections again. So you will get an introductory part. In that you will get every particular section is drafted in this manner. So there will be some introductory part. So it is going to explain background why this particular why this particular section is developed and what to expect a outline outline brief summary of what kind of things which will be there in this particular section. So you will always have a introductory part. See, we are we are covering this because this is given in the module and this if they given the module they may ask MCQ on it they may ask a case or as a chart accountant you should know what is the structure of the structure how code of ethics is framed okay we are explaining you the structure how code of ethics is framed let's see it so they expect us we teach then after introduction you will find requirement section you will find requirement so requirement is these are the principles you need to follow general principles while doing any particular activity you need to follow or some in specific situation at the time of resignation, at the time of uh, completing the assignments. So there can be general requirement we need to follow across the time you are performing any assignment or to a specific time. Then there is an application material also. So for further example, further example how to implement it, there is an application material. So there is an introduction, then there is a requirement section and then for further explanation, examples, how to implement it, there is an application material also. How to implement, there is an application material also, okay. There is an application material. So that's what they explain. That's what they explain. That is what they explain guys that uh, you are going to see an introduction, background and outline what to expect in particular. So this is the thing which they are explaining how sections within the code of ethics, how sections within the code of ethics are drafted. See that is going, that is going to be very important. If you guys are into practice or you are into, in going to be in service and if ethical matters, ethical issues arise, you should be able to read that booklet because everything will be governed as per that booklet. Punishments will be as per that booklet. NFRA, National Financial Reporting Authority, they are going to, they are going to see that booklet. Courts are going to see that booklet. CA Institute is going to see that booklet. So you should know how to read that booklet. You should know that how to read that booklet. That's why they are explaining you that then there are requirement section in general what you are supposed to follow in specific in specific situation what you are supposed to follow so general in general what is supposed to follow specific obligation will be given then application then they will be giving you uh, explanation how to why this is there how to implement examples what to do in tricky situation there will be application material also so you can say that if you can say that there are three most important things. So three most important things. One A that is, that is introduction. One B that is a requirement section. And one C that is an application. So each and every section, each and every section is divided into three parts. Okay. Then one more thing they are saying, that is how it is drafted in the module also, that it is mandatory, professional accountant must comply with the code. All the chart accountant it is mandatory for them to comply with the whole code, comply with the code. Yes, some part is for those who are in service and some part is for those who are in practice, but each and every chart accountant is supposed to comply with this code. However, law regulation may prevent compliance with certain part. Now, that is very interesting. Sometimes law or regulation may say something opposite 
or say that this part of code of ethics is not applicable to this particular assignment, then what will happen? We have studied this. Law is framed, law is framed by parliament. Law is framed by the parliament. Law is framed by parliament. If parliament is some, saying something, it is the highest authority. We have to follow that. And this code of ethics are made by CA Institute. Who has the bigger authority? Of course, parliament has a bigger authority. If parliament is having a bigger authority, we have to follow what parliament says. Correct? So, law will override this code of ethics. Very simple. So, you may get an MCQ in the exams. But what will happen? If code of ethics and law contradict with each other, definitely law is going to override code of ethics. So, that particular portion need not be followed by chartered accountants. Law and regulation take precedence. They will be followed. But accountant must still comply with other part of code. So, this particular concept is talking about two things. This is talking about two things. What is the structure? What is the structure? And structure has three things. Introduction, that is a background. Requirements, what people are supposed to follow, what principles, what requirements and the application. And in general, this code of conduct is applicable, code of ethics is applicable for everyone, all the chartered accountants. If law restricts it, okay, that particular part, that particular part will not be applicable. But rest of the portion need to be followed. So, you may get a case study. You may get a case study. You may get a, you may, a, you may get a case study and you should be extremely careful about it. So, they may say that there is a child accountant who says that uh, law or court, court has said that this portion of the code of ethics will not be applicable. And then CA says that, okay, that means code of ethics is not applicable. I am not supposed to follow code of ethics in this particular assignment. I am free from it. No. Only part of the code of ethics will not get applicable. Other things which are not called in the court order will get fully applicable. You may get a small case study on this. See, I will be discussing the small, small case studies. No such case studies has been asked till now. But then I will keep discussing the small case studies will be there. Okay. Next, guys, we come to the most important, most important means these are given, given in module. You must have studied about this in, uh, you must have studied about this uh, in your inter classes also. But then they are covered in lot of depth when it comes to see a final chapter number 19, professional ethics and liabilities of the auditor. They are covering it in more depth and I expect a lot of cases to come from here. Yes, I expect a lot of cases to come from here. So, don't take it lightly. I understand you are studying something which you already seen, but then also it is extremely important guys. Now, so five fundamental principles, we have five fundamental principles. Five fundamental principles. So, remember these principles, I have made a shortcut. You may use a shortcut, you may not use shortcut. Okay. I generally feel that uh, it is easy to remember 3 to 4 points, but something is which is beyond that, it is good to have shortcut. So, CBI, Office of CBI. Office of CBI, Office of CBI explains five fundamental principles. 